interlateral approach, the Watson-Jones. Question number 32, a 67-year-old male with severe hip arthritis presents for evaluation of a total hip arthroplasty. He's requesting an MIS, Watson-Jones approach, as he has heard postoperative mobility is significantly improved compared with a traditional transgluteal or Harding-type approach. What should the patient be told to expect during the early postoperative, uh, regarding early postoperative gait kinematics when comparing these surgical approaches? And as you can see, the minimally invasive Watson-Jones approach results in improved gait velocity. There is no difference. The minimally invasive Watson-Jones approach decrease, uh, results in decreased gait velocity. The transgluteal approach results in worse gait kinematics. And finally, early gait kinematics is dependent only on the type of prosthesis and not the surgical approach. And not surprising, despite enthusiasm, there is really little data to support that there is any difference in the kinematics comparing these two surgical approaches. Um, the Watson-Jones approach provides excellent exposure to the acetabulum and the proximal femur. As indicated, as indications include total hip. Um, patients at high risk for dislocation may benefit since there's no posterior soft tissue disruption. Hemiarthroplasty, femoral neck fracture, synovial biopsies, as well as biopsies of the femoral neck. So basic indications. This is the tensor gluteal interval with both being innervated by the superior gluteal nerve, as you can see in this diagram. Position typically and generally performed in the lateral decubitus, patient's buttock close to the edge of the table. Landmarks of the ASIS, as well as the greater trochanter. Make the incision two and a half centimeters posterior and distal to the ASIS. And as it runs distal, it becomes centered over the tip of the greater trochanter, crossing the posterior third of the trochanter before running down the shaft. The superficial dissection is in line and clear the fascia lata, incise the fascia in the direction of the fibers, and to again develop that interval between the tensor fascia lata and the gluteus medius. Externally rotate the hip to put the capsule on stretch and identify the origin of the vastus. The deep dissection detach the ductor mechanism by one of these two mechanisms, again, trochanteric flip or osteotomy, or partial detachment of the abductor, again, emphasizing be careful about your proximal dissection regarding injury to the nerve. Again, you can expose the anterior capsule, detach the reflected head of the rectus from the joint capsule to expose the anterior rim, elevate the psoas away from the capsule, perform your anterior capsulotomy, and dislocate this hip with external rotation. Extension proximally, incise more of the fascia lata to allow increased adduction and external rotation. And distally, one can incise down the deep fascia of the leg. So again, excellent summaries for the extensile nature of the Watson-Jones. Dangers, femoral nerve. The most common is a compressive neuropathy caused by medial retraction. It could be as a result of direct injury. So again, be careful about placing retractors into or medial to the psoas. The femoral artery and nerve could be damaged by retractors that penetrate the psoas. So again, uh, very careful, diligent placement of all retractors is required. This has been uh, approach has been associated with uh, abductor limp caused by either the trochanteric osteotomy or disruption of the abductor mechanism and or denervation uh, by an aggressive proximal muscular split. In addition, femoral shaft fractures, it was noted, usually occurs during dislocation. So again, no forceful dislocation. Make sure that adequate capsulotomies have been performed. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.